seeking you as a precious jewel lord to give up i'd be a fool you are my all in all jesus lamb of god worthy is your name jesus precious lamb of god worthy is your name and taking my sin my cross my shame rising again i bless your name you are my all in all when i fall down you pick me up when i am dry you fill my cup you are my all in all as I am and it's a very familiar hymn um, but there's a course added to this and so this morning as we sing this and we we worship together I pray that you guys know that God loves you just the way you are 
I know it's easy to struggle with identity. I do a lot. You know, the devil comes into our life and he, he reminds us of things not so good. It makes us question our identity a lot of times. But I want you to know that in Christ, you are loved as you are and who you are.
seated. As we begin to prepare our hearts to share in communion, I want to make sure that everyone was able to receive a communion cup and and wafer as you came in this morning. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and ask Jay and a couple of our deacons to kind of walk by the aisles here. And and if you did not receive one of those, you just missed it or whichever, we're going to make these available to you. Uh, Also, I want you to familiarize yourself uh, with the operation of this so that you don't make a mess all over yourself or all over your neighbor, okay? So if you'll notice, and we've never done it this way before, uh, we can thank COVID for so many wonderful things that have come into our lives. Can I get an amen? How about an oh me? Oh me. Yeah, when you start to handle this thing, you might go, oh me. Okay, so we're going to go real slow, and I'm going to help you, and we'll familiarize you with the operation of this before we really get into the heart of our teaching this morning. So, don't be jumping ahead real quick, okay? Uh, The top layer is a thin, and and some pad music behind this would really help us. Don't y'all think this would just really help make this moment sacred? You know, when you handle plastic, it needs to be sacred. So anyway, uh, the top part of this is a very thin plastic layer. Now, don't jerk that all the way back yet, okay? But as you can see, you can begin to separate that, okay? And that's going to expose uh, the paper, in, I'm sorry, the wafer that is actually inside. It, it looks like a little piece of paper. And uh, we're sorry, this, this is not Miss Daisy's uh, Lord's Supper communion uh, bread. We apologize for that. Again, another thing we can thank COVID for. But anyway, there is a very thin wafer that sits on top of it, okay? Now, don't peel it all the way back yet. But you can just kind of expose it and just say, good morning, wafer, I see you. There you are, and you're good to go there, right? Then, here's what you got to do. After, you'll take the wafer, okay? Then you'll take the tab. Now, don't don't get that little purple foil, okay? Because that's not going to expose the the, the fruit of the vine. You take the tab to do that. And then once you get a hold of the tab, very gently, do not do this in a hurry. Uh, You might injure yourself. Uh, very slowly, then you can expose uh, the juice that is in the cup. Okay? Y'all got that? So I'm familiarizing you with this process because when we get to that moment, we really want it to be a sacred moment and we don't, we don't want you fumbling and fibbling and, and all that stuff with this and just making a mess everywhere. Okay? So now, just kind of put that in a nice, easy spot uh, to your side. If you're at home, uh, watching with us on fa- uh, Facebook live stream today, Uh, However you're observing communion with us, we're just so thankful again that you are a part of this with us this morning. Well, we are coming to one of the special ordinances in the church. Baptism and then communion, the Lord's Supper. You would think something that is so special and so important in the life of the church, you would think that you would find all kinds of of New Testament ink uh, attributed or or dedicated to this uh, this observance. The truth is, we find it instituted by Jesus in the three synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. John does not mention the Passover celebration or the institution of the Lord's Supper. The other place that you find this is really in only one other writing of the Apostle Paul. You find it in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. It's also mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. However, this has become an event that is very, very unique in the life of the church. One of the reasons this event is so unique is because it is multi-sensory. It really is. It's multi-sensory. Uh, We deal with concepts and ideas. Uh, We may even deal with a feeling in our heart or in our life. But when it comes to baptism and communion, they are truly sensory experiences. These These are things that are tangible, that you can hold in your hand, that you can feel the texture of. You might even be able to smell this. It it, it truly is a multi-sensory experience. The other thing that is so important 
about communion is that it serves as a reminder of the gospel of Jesus. Jesus said, and he didn't necessarily prescribe how often or how many times. We don't find that in the New Testament text. Uh, We can see things that might be alluded to, but when it comes to what is described versus what is prescribed, we just hear the words of Jesus when he says, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. The one thing and only the one thing you are to recall and you are to remember during this observance is the cross of Christ. His death, his burial, and his resurrection. The cross as the event that encompasses his death, his burial, and his resurrection. You are not to remember anything else. Nothing else. You remember him. In Paul's writing in 1 Corinthians, one of the few places that we we, we find teaching in regard to the Lord's Supper, Paul would say in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, uh, verses 23 through 27, and there's a lot of context here that will really make this meaningful and special to you. First context, Jesus with his disciples instituted the night before he was crucified. He came together with the disciples to to have the Passover meal. And he said, it is with fervent desire. I've desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. And then Jesus, in customary Jewish fashion, would begin to observe the Passover meal observance. But Jesus would do something brand new. He would take the bread. And for the very first time, they would hear him say, this is my body, which is broken for you. Also, when Jesus would take the cup for the very first time, and there were four cups in the Passover meal observance, the celebration centered around four cups and the symbolism within those four cups. Here's all that they had ever known. All that they had ever known was that the greatest redemptive movement of God had been when he led the Israelites out of Egyptian bondage. And the the Passover celebration was to commemorate that and to remember that. There were four cups that pointed to significant aspects and stages of that deliverance. But there was a cup that was a future cup. It It was a cup that would point to a future redemption, a future forgiveness of sins. So in their hearts as Israelites, they would look forward when they would have the Passover meal. Oh yeah, they would look back and they'd remember God's great movement of redemption in their lives, their history. But then one of those cups was about looking forward to redemption, to the forgiveness of sins. And guess what? When Jesus takes a cup, he takes that cup and he says this is the cup of my blood the cup of the the new covenant and they knew in their hearts and their minds that when Jesus said those words and he took that cup that that future redemption cup they knew whoa something's moving here something's happening history is is moving here something heaven is on the move god is moving god is doing something that we've been waiting and hoping for him to do and they would hear him say for the first time those words and i'm telling you it would be like wow it's happening what we've been waiting for all of our lives is happening right now. Later when Paul would write and it would be an actual event and a time that the church would come together and and they would have a meal together and then, then they would have the Lord's Supper. Paul would write and he would say 
in 1 Corinthians 11, beginning in verse 23. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. But then he says something that many times is taken out of context and, and, and is misunderstood by people, even in the church. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. And so people would walk away from verse 27 from Paul's words here and say, Oh, I hope and pray that I'd be worthy to take it. And there have actually been people who've come to a service like this. And maybe some things happened in their lives and maybe some things went wrong in their week and maybe they sinned and blew it and they thought, oh Lord, I'm not worthy. And, and people have actually come to an event like this and would not take the supper because they did not think they were worthy. Jesus said, when you do this, you remember me. You don't remember anything else. You remember me. When Paul writes and says about taking this in an unworthy manner, the context of 1 Corinthians 11 helps us to know what was going on. The church had lost sight of what this is all about. And they would come together and they would have their feast meal. And Paul talks about it in the text. And many of them would come and they'd come early and they would drink and they would drink a lot. And many of them began to even get drunk and would drink so much around this feast and this celebration that they were just inebriated when, when it came time to really focus on what it was about. Other people came and they were poor. And they were hungry. And some folks had come and, and they had been gluttonous and, and they would eat the feast. And others that might arrive late would be poor and hungry and would not have anything to eat. That's why Paul would say things like, go eat at your home. Get, get filled at your home, but don't come here. And, and then be in this state to where people are deprived of this feast meal that is had. The, the unworthy manner is when people are using it as a feast to get drunk, or they are depriving poor people who are hungry. This is not our context. That's not what we're doing here today. That's the unworthy manner. You need to know one thing and one thing alone. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, by virtue of the broken body of Christ and the shed blood of Jesus, you are worthy. And, and, and your worthiness has nothing to do with anything that you've done or anything that you haven't done. Your worthiness has everything to do with everything that He has done. I'm telling you, communion can be like healing to your soul. Because you, when you remember Him, you remember that because of what He did, He has forgiven you of all of your sins. Every single one. Communion is a time of celebration. It's a time to be joyous. It's not to be overly somber. 
It's a celebration of what he has done. And we remember the words of the Hebrew writer when he says that Jesus did this once and for all. And the one time that he gave his life and shed his blood is sufficient for all times. The one time. His presence with us today is because of the Holy Spirit who lives inside of us. That same Spirit is with us wherever we go and whatever we do in our lives. But we're reminded of that through the time of communion and observing the Lord's Supper. So I'm going to ask you just to bow your heads for just a second. And I just want to give you the opportunity and the time to truly, personally, Remember Jesus. The other element of this event is the future aspect of what it means for us. We are to look forward as we remember Christ. We are to imagine the great banquet and feast that he's preparing for his bride, the church. We are to look forward to the time that we can not just spiritually but physically be in His presence and share this great feast with Him. It does the soul good to look forward to that future completion and culmination of redemption. It does the soul good to look forward to glorification and what Christ will accomplish and what He will complete one day ahead of us. So we look back, we look within, and we look ahead. We say, thank you, Lord, that you've delivered me from the bondage of sin. Thank you, Lord, that today your presence is inside of me. And thank you, Lord, that you hold out for us a future completion of this redemption that you began in us. And Lord, you are faithful to complete what you've done. You've given us your promise in your word. And when you could not promise to anyone other who is greater, Father, you promised to yourself. That's the heart and the nature of the new covenant. God has made promises to himself about us and our salvation. By two unchangeable things that cannot ever be altered. That God does not lie. And his character is unchanging. So that future. Is just as sure. As the present standing of my forgiveness in Christ. Right now. And I am to live. That way. We're going to hear. The words. Of the biblical text again. You can take. The top part, peel it back, and very gently remove the top piece, which is the, the wafer. This is Matthew's account. 
I read Paul's earlier. This is Matthew. While they were eating, Jesus took some bread and after a blessing, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body. And now take the other part, the tab. And grab that tab firmly, but very gently peel it back. Don't squeeze the bottom. And when he had taken a cup and given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for forgiveness of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. For as often as you drink this cup, as often as you eat this bread, Jesus said, you proclaim my name until I come. Oh, Lord. Oh, how we need to proclaim your name and what you've done for us. Oh, we thank you, Lord that we were participants of this with you, that we were crucified with you on that cross spiritually, Father. We thank you that we were, we were buried spiritually in that tomb with you. And Father, we thank you that we have been raised to new life in you. We thank you, Father, that we've received the pouring out and the shedding of your blood. And Lord, we have come out on the other side clean, pure and worthy and holy. Oh, Lord, we stand in the proclamation of your name and all that you've done for us, Lord. And we need to be reminded often, so often, Father, all of who you are, all of what you've done, and all of who we are in you. We thank you, Lord, that we've had this opportunity today. And we pray this in Jesus' name. I'm going to ask you to do something. Just stand quietly, very reverently with us today. And I know that you still have this. And Dallas is going to come and lead us in a song as we begin to wrap up. As you stand with us this morning, I want you to very gently take this. And, and listen, I, I'm not going to have the guys to come around and you throw this in, in, in the receptacle, okay? Here's what I want you to do. I want you to take this. I want you to take this empty cup. And I want you to be reminded that this empty cup helps us to understand that Jesus emptied himself. And, and, and hopefully there's nothing else in your cup but maybe a few little bubbles in there, okay? Okay? But let this serve as a reminder. Everything that needed to be done for your redemption and your forgiveness has already been done. This is not your covenant. You are a benefactor of the covenant that God made with himself about you. It was not your blood. It was his blood. It was not your death. It was his death. 
the sufficiency that was required and needed for you to be redeemed and be in the presence of God has been met thoroughly through the finished work of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. There is nothing you can add to this cup. So don't you try. Because when you do, you begin to take away from all that he did for you. So you carry this empty cup. The guys will be at the doors. They will have receptacles for you. And as you carry the empty cup, just be reminded, he emptied himself completely for you and for me. So let's sing, let's celebrate, and then uh, Dallas will pray us out, okay? All right, here we go. is not only here today, but it's for eternity. Lord, we love you and we thank you. I'll be with us as we go through this week. Keep us safe. In your son's precious and holy name I pray. Amen.